Hi everyone, this is Daisy. We're going to work on um, a basic drawing level two that uh, represents ages seven, eight, even nine. And uh, this project is ideal for them. It's going to be an animated drawing. Uh, one of the things I like about animated drawings is, and it's of the human body, it teaches a lot. And the strokes are simplified, so it makes it a little bit easier to work on them. Our materials are pencil, ink, and markers. So here we go. It's the picture of Princess Meridia. And you know her, she's always ready for a good fight. So this is with her drawing her bow and arrow. So let's look at this. So the first thing that one should do is just kind of place as to how you want the things to fit in. I'm going to put in her arm and the placement of her face that will help me to maintain how much space I need for everything. So this close to my right side, I'm going to put in her hand. This is her hand. This is her forearm right there. And then comes her upper arm right about here and I'm going to close it. I make sections like these so I know where I'm at. I'm going to do the fingers later, but right next to where her upper arm ends, this is where she has her chin. And we go diagonal line, and then for now we're gonna make a straight line. That is where her face would be, her arm, and um, the second arm will come in as we keep working on our drawing. I would like to reduce the face a little bit. Feels like it's going a little bit too big. Now let's start. We're going to start with her eyebrow. Keep it easy. Eyebrow follows the nose like this. Her eye is going to be right here and Now that we have her eye, we can take off her line that we made for her face and connect it a little bit better. So the edge of the eye connects to the eyebrow right there, which goes upward right there. And from the bottom corner of the eye, you can bring out her cheek like so. Her mouth is going to be, create the curve for her mouth itself. And then higher to the middle, lower to the sides. And we have a fuller lip to the bottom, which connects up here and goes to the edge. So you have that. Now at this point, I can add in a little bit more of her cheek. So I don't want the cheek line to be so close to her lips to where I can alter this and we're going to go one, two. So you have the cheek line and then you have her iris, which is pretty big. Right there. I would like to kind of wash clean that up a bit. Don't know why I had a little bit of a curve issue there, but there. The second eye moves along the same parameter right here, and the bottom of the eye is going up like so. The top of the eye is going straight first, followed by a curve. And so that's what I draw. The left eye should be smaller, the right should be way bigger. And you can have the eye itself. I want to pick up the corner of the eye a little bit. So that means I'm going to let it go up here and I'm going to let it come here. And her eyebrow comes from right there. Like this. 
At this point, I know that I want to increase my arm size a little bit more. So I'm going to add, this becomes my upper arm. Feels a little bit more right for the size of face that I've drawn. Then I have my forearm. Then I have my hand. Not a curve, keep it as a straight line, but moving diagonally, this is a little straighter. So those are the differences. Now, we have a lot of hair. I mean, she's just, whew, she's got a lot of hair. So starting from the middle, right above the nose over here, Coming from the cheek over here. I draw by connecting um, from one strand to the other. Once I make one part of it, I use that part to attach to the next and then the next and the next. So I've got this much done over the shoulder. Again, this part doesn't really show as what we have drawn it. We'll take off the line and we have a curl. comes in over here. This part Coming in back over here. So it's like she's her hair is so spread out that I'm just trying to figure out like which one I want to do. So let's come to the front and finish this off, shall we? So right over here, we have a small curl that goes in. The next one that I see starts right about here. Now coming to her upper shoulder, there's another wisp that kind of moves right there. There's the end of another curl here. There's the end of another curl right here on the middle of her upper arm. So you have coming to the highest this part I would not really touch I would add one more right there so that should make her hair on the top part and we have all of that done really nicely get off any skeleton lines or what we call ghost lines that don't make sense in your picture so you've got her arm stretched out and now let's work on her hand so if you end off this part as being her the 
the palm of her hand right there. Now the next thing, one, and then from this side, the finger is holding and supporting the arrow as well. So you want to have this finger here spread out. And then the rest of the fingers would close and there would be one and two, like that. Now, uh, you can anchor your bow in here. I'm gonna say that I drew this line. Let me see if I can put it in relation to her. So from the edge of her hair, this is where the line will keep straight till where you meet the hair. At which point you're going to turn it upward like this and just leave it there for a minute you can add in a second line which is the frame gradually becoming skinnier this goes out from that end and here we go you have a bow generally has got um, strapping wrapped around where you need to grip it. So we have, now we're going to take away these lines because that doesn't make sense really. And we're going to add in her actual clothes which wrap around her body like this. This is her, I believe this to be her um brace if you are a warrior in back in those days when you had kings queens and all there was always a brace that you were given as would maria be given a brace then there's a something that's around her elbow so we're going to draw that so it's a curve for right now and it goes around and then a second curve rises over it and it comes around like this so you would get rid of your pencil lines right here. There we go. Her left hand is now situated next to this elbow part. And I want to move my wisp of hair up a little bit higher. So I'm going to um, make my hand first in relation to this, then I'll finish that hair. So palm of the hand, which would be one, two. Her thumb would go out and would be right there. Her fingers lace the string of the bow. So there is a motion of like holding on to something. What you now need to do is you need to draw a straight arrow that comes, sits right here, the stem of it, from her fingers. So from her fingers to her hand right here, going past it. And then the second part of that is going to be right here. Once you draw an area that has got two sections and one has to prevail, you would erase and just redraw what you want to keep on top and then what you do on the bottom. You can get rid of the line between that forms our knuckles right there. So this forms our hand and here is her dress and this is going up. This becomes her brace, just like we had at the other arm. And at this point, you would have her hair 
like this. So you would have her hand right here and to make the hand feel a little bit more, you have the palm line right there. Now, what about the string? The string goes to the loop here. So we have a loop here and this, I'm going to replace this because it has to be centered. See, this bow will travel off like so. So if it travels off like so, we have right there now we want to put the string into her finger from here from there so we would have now this part doesn't feel right and that tells me that I need to drop the line of my string a little bit so I'm taking this off I want the string that comes to her hand to be moving downward if that be the case then we're going to take our arrow like this. And we're going to add our swirly right here. And that will make perfect sense. So when you draw, you may not always get it onto the, in the alignment that you want, and that's okay. But you've got to at least shoot for it don't settle for i guess this will work kind of an attitude understand what makes a drawing what it does so here you go that's our bow this is her arm now comes her waist so from her elbow you will see her waist right here and strapped to her waist is her belt so the belt kind of goes around like this. She has a medallion anchored almost like a belt buckle. So she'll have that. And there we go. Um, so you have, if you can see it, this is her waistline. That's her medallion buckle. And right there. And so coming over her shoulder from here is her cape. It goes to that strand of hair, it goes past it. Right there. Do it one more time. And we're going to go like this. So we're going to redraw our hair going over it. That's our cape. And we have got the other side of our cape on the other side, but we have her body right here. And from her medallion is a scarf. So one, trail out from the scarf lines, about five of them, short and long. So we have shorter, longer. Like this. And then the other side of her cape comes in from the other shoulder right there. So it should ideally come out from under here. This is the drawing of Meridia and we are going to get into our coloring part starting with the colors themselves and then moving forward. 
so uh, lightest um, skin tones first so that we can control what goes on later that's the way we're going to be approaching this thing okay remember to protect your picture So as you put colors down, you have to protect them. So step one, the lightest color tone that you can get out. Pale fruit pink. This is the one that I have. And I'm going to just put it down on her face and er everywhere. In our school, when we were constructing our Pearland location, our teachers were requested to help us paint ceiling tiles. And uh, there was a picture of Meridia that was shortlisted as being the one that we wanted to go up. It was hilarious because everybody wanted to be able to do it. And everybody thought that they would do it. But eventually what happened was this young teacher who didn't know that everyone had been wanting to do specifically the Meridia picture went ahead and just picked up the ceiling tile and just did it either ways. So when we, the rest of us had a chance to kind of get to it, the first thing we asked was, where's that picture of Meridia? Oh, I'm sorry. That one's already been done. Was what we were told. So none of the rest of us didn't get the opportunity to work on Meridia's face at all. And I can promise you a lot of them wanted to work on her face. It was just a very interesting composition. Right now, if you ever, if you all ever get the chance to come around to our Pearland location and have a look at our tiles there, you'll see the picture I'm talking about. It's gorgeous. Of course, the teachers did a fantastic job, um, but more than that, it was like, you know, everybody wanted that one picture. So I'm glad that I'm able to work on another project of Meridia with all of you. Just, I don't know, there's something about maybe the way that they stylized her and a lot of the pictures that come off as being Meridia. It makes you want to kind of just be able to get to her and just sit down and do the work. And what I would do for her hair is, so this is her um, cape. The cape finishes off right about here. So the rest of it is supposed to be Meridia's hair. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this tone to put the under color so to say for her hair and then we'll add bring in the fairy reds and the oranges that make up Meridia but you do need a, a light undertone um, for her hair so that is going to be your step one so look into your markers anything that you see is light so if you don't have specific tones that you could use not not to worry um, you might have a yellow a lemon yellow pick that up if you don't have it in your uh, markers and you have something in color pencils that would work just as well just use it that's all it is So all over, wherever she has hair, my first job is to put in the lightest tone that I see. 
and I'm doing just that. Then I'll work on putting in details. So I'll wherever I want to show some highlights in her hair, I'll be intentionally leaving some parts of her hair with just this color showing, and the rest of it will be different. Okay, and then we have, hold on. You want to do an orange. So orange to the top parts of the hair and um, reds to the underlying parts of the hair. So what that means is, um, you would use I would leave a fine line between all my curls so that it shows as if it's um, some division between uh, the one strand to the other. like this. So do you notice how I'm leaving areas um, that are not done intentionally? These areas are going to be It's a painstaking job, but it's that's what you need to do to get um, the variation. Nowadays, you get um, jelly pens, um, and I believe the jelly pens have got a really good um, uh, finish to them. They, if you put them over a darker area, they will hold up really well. They won't uh, dissolve. The color won't blur out because the background is stronger than they are. They hold up really nicely. So if you want to invest in a few jelly pens, they cost about $2 a piece or so, say. And sometimes you get them on discount. Um, but you can get the specific colors that you need and you don't have to do this stuff. You can color it as a solid color and um, 
Yeah, that would uh, just take care of it versus having to kind of contour every single strand. Make sure that you are um, really creating the different layers of our hair. Um, can get to be tedious, but then again, see, I guess all these things teach us. Apply some of these um, cool techniques because apparently this is from some of the masters who give us some of our favorite animations. And it's their ways in which they handle different uh, characters. So for Meridia, she's got so, all this lush of hair and she's a warrior on top of it. So I guess they wanted to be able to bring in the girl side of her, but at the same time, um, show her to be a very strong-willed kind of a person. I would use this red to start putting in the color to her eyebrows as well as her lips at this point. I wouldn't wait till later and I'll be adding on more color as I go to all these areas as I get them done. So orange is done. We're moving to our carmine red or maybe let's just take our red but it would be a good idea to work on some of the carmine reds so that we can control the gradation gradations into the hair. Markers are amazing to work with, oh, but you just got to remember it's all about the layers again, you know, I mean, oh, we think that we don't need to, but if you want to give depth into your picture and you want to show um, like a lot of volume and stuff, that needs to come by way of layers, doing darks and lights. Don't go to the top part of her hair because, uh, head I mean, because that's where the hair is brightest and we want the oranges to be dominant there. So it's the lower part of her hair when they, when her face is shadowing them or her body creates a shadow on them, they will pick up a darker volume, not the hair on the top of her head. I intentionally leave some areas with just the orange. If you were not planning to do as much work on um, her face, her hair, and you want to speed up the video to go to her dress and see what we do there, you can definitely do that. Because it's hard for me to know what um, is how much some people would want to get from a video to teach them or not. So I, I guess when I get feedback from all of you all, that's what tells me as to how much I need to really work on and put in here. But my experience with kids in classes is if you show them the, the capabilities and the techniques and the uh, how high they can go, I've seen kids just push for more and more and more. So given my um, knowledge of what students enjoy, I'm putting a lot out there and take as much or as little of it as you are wanting to take. Now the very bottom areas I'm going to add in my red, like proper red.
that would be how much I do for my hair now for the uh, body um, that means I'm working on the blues now so I'm going to start off with the palest of blues that I've got and get that into the entire dress that she has so that I can use that for my highlights um, as I need to remember her belt is not a blue so don't put this on her belt you have to remember where her colors are and then on her this wrap around her waist on her um, elbow she has blue and yellow stripes Always leave a white spot don't forget your white spots they give a life into the eyes they look brilliant um, but if you forget it it's again the jelly pens might help you to uh, Trace your outline. Remember, this is the inside of her cloak. That's why I'm getting it the blue here. I'm taking care not to touch my face or my hair for Meridia because it's very easy to put your hand and create a smudge. Very hard to fix it. And so if you are a perfectionist or if you really go after details, this is something that you should just be doing all the time as an insurance policy. You just don't take a chance with this stuff. And then we have the blue. Where's my blue gone? Blue, 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 blue. Ultramarine. This is going to be this one, I think. The top of her arm, that's what I just colored. The stripes on her um, are not colored all over with the dark blue, it's mainly the light blue. There. This. Her arm brace only has it on half side. That means you do not need to color the entire brace dark. Leave half of it white, uh, like a light blue. Do not put it in. So here we go. You have got her scarf. There's also the arm that comes out from under her hair. All not sections in that will be dark because of the shadow that's cast from her upper body so this is going to be
Here we go. This is going to be So you've got these areas defined now and now our next thing will be a darker blue which is like a navy blue Oops. starting from up here Again, uh, take care. So we're going to get in.
very carefully you have to contour around all your lines. This is you get from a picture as much as you're putting in. It's a hundred percent correlation. That means if you want to rush your picture, so be it. If you want to understand the process and you want to really get it right, so be it. It's really what the artist wants. In this case, the artist can be even seven years old. Nobody's judging. But that's the honest truth of it. It depends on how much you want from the whole process. process For yellows, so you have The belt is a brown color. And the buckle looks like a gold medallion. So if it's got a gold medallion, you would want to put in an undershade first and then use your brown to kind of uh, give it, just like contour lines, as if there was some kind of a carving in it. I wanted to go further than this part. And um, the bow and the arrow is going to be
the second shade on the skin tones and you would want to bring in a little bit of Again, try to invest into markers for skin tones. You do get them in the market. You don't, you should just try them out there, see which ones you would like to be able to use and bring them in. It's as simple as that. Last but not the least is going to be our black to just create some contours where we need them. So starting with the eye, uh, the top. And that would be our Witcher on Meridia. Thank you for watching. And if you do try this project and you have a picture that you finished, do set and share it with us. We'd love to see what you've done. If you have any requests or suggestions, do put them down below so that we can address them and we get back to you in the next tutorial. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.